when is it the right time to raise money somebody is charging 10 lakhs somebody 5 lakhs you know we had done a revenue of 36 lakhs a year before with uh, 1.8 lakhs profit before tax because i wasn't taking a salary agar main salary the loss rata there is no work life balance there's only work life integration you live for your work for the first few years definitely you can't push off at 5 pm and say ho gaya this saturday sunday mein kaam nahi karta aapko karna padega if you wanted to succeed but let me tell you all these lists of you know top 100 top is not rubbish you're financially successful when you're doing better than your sister in law's husband <laughs> that is the best one line i've heard on the podcast i think Welcome to the Indian Silicon Valley podcast. I'm your host Jivraj and today I'm gathered for a very very special podcast with the legendary Mr. Sanjeev Bikchandani who's the founder of InfoEdge. Thank you so much sir for joining me today. Thank you for inviting me Jivraj. I'm very excited and absolutely honored to have the opportunity to host you again on the show. Mm-hmm. You were very kind the first time around to uh be there for the 50th episode on the podcast and now we are Two years in, we've done hundred more episodes. The ecosystem has evolved a bunch. The last time we spoke, it was twenty twenty one. Everything was very happy. Everything was very kind. Uh, everybody was full of positive sentiment. Uh, currently, there seems to be some sort of negative sentiment. But since then, Zomato has gone public. Policy Bazaar has gone public. Uh, we've seen multiple things happen on your end. Where I want to start this conversation, Mr. Sanjeev, is that if you can share. Uh, what the current markets hold for the young entrepreneur who is uh, who saw the young wave of po- positive optimism but now is seeing some sort of pessimism in the country but where do you think indian entrepreneurship is headed and what would you like to say to that young entrepreneur well uh, i think i will say what i've always said uh, focus on the customers money not the investors money right right beach may it became very easy to mm-hmm. raise investor money and perhaps more than you needed or deserved uh okay but uh, very you know very often people mistake that for success that is not success right that is merely success at raising money it's not success at running a viable business mm-hmm. so i've always said that the customer's money is better than the investor's money because if you're getting the customer's money and you're getting it repeatedly and you're getting it at a price that's higher than your cost uh then chances are you have a viable business if you can get enough customers right right uh and if you get the customers money investor ka paisa aayega zarur aayega absolutely okay because investors love to invest behind businesses that are getting customers money 100% on the other hand if you get the investors money first it does not mean the customer ka paisa aayega correct because the customer is not going to do any favors the customer you cannot go in front of the customer and make a powerpoint pitch and take his money right that's right the product or service has to work for the customer uh for his, the customer to buy a second time yeah absolutely okay uh now very often uh, we say that if i i need vc to start a business but the truth is the sal pehle koi vc tha nahi india mein correct we business chalu ho rahe the mm mm-hmm. jab uh, maine chalu kiya 1990 mein there was no venture capital we launched nokri in 97 there was no venture capital we bootstrap nokri for 3 years and then raised venture capital right to ag- jo entrepreneur hai jo asli entrepreneur hai he will be an entrepreneur whether or not he raises venture capital Absolutely. So this business of I need external funding as a prerequisite to be an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. I think is wrong. Absolutely. Focus on the customer. Focus on the customer's money. Uh, you know, I was in a panel discussion a few years back, and uh, I was sitting with Sanjeev Agarwal on the panel, uh, f- founder of Helion Ventures and uh, founder of Daksh, <laughs> and now in Fundamentum. <clears throat> so somebody got up and asked a question, uh, saying. when is it the right time to raise money and he said a very perceptive thing very insightful sanjeev agarwal he said the best time to raise money is when the investor comes to you and not when you go to the investor wow. so focus on getting your company and business into a situation and position where the investor comes to you yeah rather than you going out and pitching so because true. that takes a lot of time yeah you may not get it Mm-hmm. Uh, you you know uh you should spend that time focusing on your product and your customers mm. uh you you get some revenue you get some customers yeah uh, investor will, investors will chase you and Absolutely. when investors chase you you get the valuation you want you get the terms you want you the money comes in with some speed right uh, so the so that's what i'd say absolutely no i i am so glad a 
it's like this continuous message you've been propagating through decades now which is that focus on the customer build businesses because of deep customer insights and that has always been a constant and i'm so glad uh, you're championing this against the uh, the broad narrative of celebrating funding as much uh, but coming to the other point right we you have seen the ecosystem now as a digital entrepreneur for 33 years before that you were also building uh, you know companies you were working uh, talk to us about the india story and how that maps with the startup story right which is to say that we talk about this 5 trillion economy we talk about multiple unicorns how have you observed business cycles and in that context how do you see startups contributing to the larger india story um so i began my working career in 1984 straight out of college that's, uh, 29, that's 39, 39 years, years ago almost 40 years ago in between i went for to do study management for two years mm -hmm. so i had a total work experience of about maybe 38 years mm -hmm. uh, as of now in 84 and i compare and i compare that business environment and state of indian industry then to what it is today uh there's a huge change it's a, it's a you know people say revolution but i would say it's evolution you know chali saal mein revolution hoti hai the evolution hoti and most revolutions are actually evolutions yeah right but in hindsight it looks like a revolution true but if i look at uh, where the growth has come from where employment has come from where investment has gone what are the places where there's buzz and the place where there's buzz shifts over time mm -hmm. uh almost all of this has come from companies and sectors that did not exist in 1984 or or perhaps barely existed that's so true so it services barely existed IT enabled services did not exist mobile telephony did not exist private sector telecom companies did not exist private sector insurance companies did not exist private sector banking barely existed uh internet did not exist uh, uh the website did not exist uh, mobile apps did not exist uh private sector airlines did not exist organized retail did not exist e-commerce did not exist so sector after sector has come up in the last 40 years sure. company after company what it tells me is that the giant companies of today many of them were startups or not even not yet startups yeah 40 years ago so hcl and infosys were startups in in the 1980 in 1984 when i began my career yeah right uh today they are giant companies and there are many others like that uh info edge uh, nokri started in 1997 that's you know 26 years ago okay yeah A tiny company run out of a seven quarter of a garage yeah right today we are you know listed and uh, you know we be a profitable and, and reasonably large uh so startups actually are the future of the economy but over a few decades yeah not immediately mm -hmm. uh i think what is commendable is that this government has recognized that hmm. and has uh, got a positive policy program under startup india right to actually encourage startups so startups are happening anyway the government put a structure on it that's and, true and more importantly uh, the government did path breaking stuff such as setting up a fund of funds of 10000 crores yeah. managed by sidbi yeah. because it gave a kick start to uh, the domestic venture capital industry true. okay most of our risk capital comes from overseas it still does mm. but you need enough domestic risk capital True. okay so so all that is happening so yes there are ups and downs yes uh, you know there was a boom in a bubble and now people are saying funding winter will actually is enough money for good companies yeah right so the question you have to ask is are you a good company and if i'm not today then how do i get that tomorrow you'll get the money but you got to be a good company absolutely but uh, I think the health of the startup ecosystem you can measure three four ways. Sure. Number one, are there enough young smart founders trying? Yeah, check. Is there enough risk capital and enough investors willing to invest in the early stage? A lot better than it was say twenty years ago. Absolutely, check. Yeah. Uh, is the market large? I mean, when we launched Nokri, there were fourteen thousand internet accounts in the country. Yeah. today we're talking about 900 million users it's sizable it's sizable are are there role models histories uh, successful companies ipos yeah. exits happening yeah uh, 100% okay so it's not perfect mm -hmm. but 
you know, we are getting better and better every year. And yes, within that, there will be ups and downs. And uh, but फिर भी फिर भी अच्छी कंपनी के लिए बहुत पैसा है. Absolutely. Net net, absolutely positive, and that's what's driving growth in the country. So let me tell you a little story from an investor's perspective. Sure. Our two best investments, our policy bazaar and Zomato. Yes. We invested in policy bazaar first uh, in June in in, in in June 2008, just before the global financial crisis. Yeah. Okay. We invested in Zomato in 2010. in the middle of the global financial crisis markets were down funding was not easily available uh yet great companies were born then and we got great investments so we are positive that look the market is down it's yeah. probably a better time to invest sure no that's that's lovely to hear i think a lot of clear fundamentals and very interesting to get that vantage point i, I want to take a quick uh, quick digression right uh, when when anybody observes your career outside in and they could argue that you you know reached the pinnacle of success and i don't want to over exaggerate but you know uh, you built successful companies you've invested in successful companies you've uh, built an education institution which is building futures for uh, multiple younger folks in the country uh, i'd love to understand what your sort of broad definition of uh, success is i know this sounds pretty generic but for somebody who aspires to be like you or have a career maybe even 10% like yours what would you like to tell them when they are trying to define success see i had no long term vision i was living for the week for the day for the quarter okay right and for me early success meant if you survived you were successful mm-hmm. right to mujhe yaad hai we used to pay our salaries on the Seventh of every month for the previous month, yeah. and I remember so many months in the early nineties uh, where we didn't have money in the bank on the twenty sixth or twenty seventh or twenty eighth, mm-hmm. and I was always wonder, will I meet pay- meet payroll, yeah. right? And but somehow we always did, just yeah. about. Yeah. So we never had a single month of default or delay. Okay, uh, for me that was success at that stage. Mm-hmm. We survived. Yeah. Okay. Uh, We were living by our wits, producing new products each time. Uh, somehow, trying getting to sell them, right? Being very frugal, keeping our costs low. Very often, foregoing our own salary. I remember for the first ten years uh, before we raised venture capital, uh, for roughly I think seven years or six years, I could not take a salary. You know, yeah. I think six years, maybe seven years, right? And it was sporadic, and it was not a lot when it came. And therefore, I would teach on weekends at business schools in and around Delhi. as visiting faculty to get some money in order to survive yeah okay but you manage yeah. right you you know you if you're jogadu enough you manage yeah yeah uh, that's that's lovely uh, i want to double click there right in the moment at the time when it was happening like a lot of the fancy words like hustle jogada now table stakes right we know founders are supposed to do that but what was in the moment that kept you At it because the yeah, Zomato yeah, investment. Yeah, Jugada became a strategy <laughs> to on, survive. On, 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 only lately, right? Before that, you were doing it and not thinking much about it hmm. because you know you had to. Uh, you had to. Yeah, got right? it. I mean, uh, how did I become a visiting faculty? Uh, basically, I had quit my job and uh, I was a, a, a former colleague of mine. Um, in my last company, was teaching at IMT Ghaziabad as a visiting faculty. Hmm. I said, "Mere koi pran pran hai." How much do you get paid? He says, "I get paid two fifty rupees an hour." Hmm. So I said, "That's great. That's, that's a class is I take a class for ninety minutes." I said, "That's great. That's six hundred rupees." So hmm. can I take uh, eight classes? Can I take say seven classes a month, six classes, whatever? I can get two and a half thousand rupees in a month. Hmm. He says, "Yeah, let me figure." So give me your CV. Um, so I asked him, "Hey, we do the worst taught taught course by visiting faculty in marketing last year." So he told me marketing and service industries. Now I had never studied it, never done it. You know, कुछ पता नहीं था. I said मैं वो ही पढ़ाऊँगा because you know वहाँ पे need है. Okay. I said why was it badly taught? He said because the visiting faculty got transferred half of their course to Bombay, and so the course could not be completed. So mm-hmm. I so he said I said बंदा ही नहीं है. I said नहीं बंदा ही नहीं है. I said please बस ये भी डाल दे. Perfect. So they called me and they gave it to me. I love yeah. it. So I identified need gap. So if you identify need gap. Hmm. You know, in Nokri, we identify need gap. In our earlier business, we identify need gap. Zomato, we identify need gap. Yeah. If you identify a need gap and just plug it. Yeah. 
and then build a moat around it around your business you'll be all right lovely i i love how simple you make it sound and how it is actually and you don't over glamorize any of it it's just the need of what you did um uh, because it's commendable how the zomato story also we've all heard the story of you writing an email to dipinder goel one day and you reaching out proactively who would say that you know this ceo at the time or like the founder of a digital first uh, public company would have made that move but you did so that was really commendable uh, i want to understand the fact that you've seen yourself evolve over the years you've seen other generational entrepreneurs uh, through the you know thick and thin you've seen them through the first investment to when they've gone public are there any common traits that you can perhaps highlight that uh, outlive or that that are just evident in outlier founders see uh, i'll i'll tell you uh, honest answer every founder we invested in we believed in okay some succeeded wildly hmm. some are still work in progress and some uh, did not did not but all of them are good yeah right so hmm. if you ask me now now so in in hindsight uh you will always find reasons for failure yeah okay in hindsight you'll always say this is what is great about this guy so sometimes i think maybe you know i'm not so good mm. at identifying maybe i just invested in 10 and 2 worked mm. okay but but uh you know uh but obviously there must be something i think i think the biggest thing is there has to be some ability to sell and and raise revenue not i mean raise money is important from investors but raise revenue from customers right. you got to have a rainmaker mm. i think a clear eye on the customer and the customer's needs and a very good product person now all of this need not be in one person but it should be there in the founding team and the team around them mm. got it right i think uh, to be very good with people because you can't build a team otherwise yeah. uh, see see uh in the early to mid stage of a company it is the founder or the founders who have to be the personal magnet for talent absolutely they have to be the kind of people who others want to work with right they also all of them have to be good sales people yeah not just selling to customers selling to investors selling to Future. colleagues and employees yeah right uh, you're selling all the time absolutely so people have to be convinced that what you're doing is 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 something they want to do and is right. worthwhile Yeah. Right. Uh, and that's how you attract employees because in the beginning you won't have money. Yeah. To pay high salaries, but you have to have the belief and passion yourself, and you have to be able to communicate it in an infectious manner. Yeah. Uh, so that others can join enthusiastically. Sure. Even if you don't have the money. Sure. Fascinating. And, and then you know, hopefully you'll get things done because hopefully you'll also produce a good product because you know your customer. Hundred percent. And hopefully you you will be able to sell to customers and get money because. you have to be a good salesman sure so i think the single most important trait of an entrepreneur is the ability to create trust across the table with employees co-founders investors customers right uh that's in the moment right now and then uh, i think resilience and persistence to hang on in for the long haul i remember uh, before we went into uh, zomato uh you know i i sat with deepinder and pankaj and i asked them a point blank question guys you guys are not mbas you are a iit you work in bain consulting the typical path of a iit grad who goes to a consulting company is after 2 years you go to the us for an mba yeah <laughs> right uh i hope you're not just dabbling and after 2 years you'll say you know it was a hobby and interest ho gaya yeah now i'm doing an mba mm-hmm. you'll stay with it because the salary is minimum right and they look me in the eye and said yes we are in for a long haul we put in the money i think so resistance resilience persistence really important ki hum lage rahenge kuch bhi ho jaye yeah no that's phenomenal since we're on the zomato story uh, the zomato success was not very evident until a couple of years in right and the food delivery business came later but infoedge kept backing zomato at for the first couple of rounds almost solely uh, we were solo in the first four rounds hmm. it's in the fifth round that uh, we got a co-investor sequoia hmm. um but in the first four rounds we always went in against a competitive term sheet hmm. so there were others who were interested got it so uh, the first time we met dipinder 
uh, you know, um, uh, he had a was having a verbal conversation with a bulge bracket VC, uh, who were offering him half a million dollars uh, for twenty five percent of the company. This is one and a half million pre money, sure. and we told him. So first of all, like, our chemistry was good, and you know, of course, you know, we are founders, so we can we can we can we can talk to founders, you know, properly, right? Uh, and we can relate to them. Uh, so uh, what we said was, at least in, in half a million dollars, you you start raising money within two months because you know because it will last you six months and it takes mm-hmm. time for to raise money, yeah. and you would not have achieved anything in two months. Mm-hmm. So why didn't you take twice the money and we'll up the valuation, which is what we did. Got it. The second round, another bulb bracket VC came and said we will give you three billion dollars at fifteen million pre money. And uh, we quickly scrambled and said, "We'll give you three million dollars, twelve million dollars, free money." But our diligence is not over. You won't have a second MIS to give to anybody. You will not be having two investors in your cap table. Your life will be less complicated. Got it. They said, "Okay." Mm-hmm. The third time we went in was uh, another international VC. Mm-hmm. All the three international VCs, uh, and. They were talking about six million dollars at thirty uh, million pre. The deal fell apart when they insisted on lick pref in U.S. dollars, mm-hmm. and uh, we put our foot down and said, "Listen, you know, you're investing in India. Your lick pref will be in rupees. You, know, you take the exchange risk. It's not this company's job to and other shareholders to bear the brunt of the exchange risk." Mm-hmm. And we made an alternate offer. We said, "Okay, you don't need six million. You actually need three million. We'll give you three million at the same valuation." Mm-hmm. So, and the fourth time uh, was when they wanted uh, the they wanted some sixty uh, million dollar valuation. Okay. He was getting forty four million in the market. Okay. And uh, we went and sold it to our board and said, "Dekho, ham start million de dete hain isko. We already own forty eight percent. So if you up the valuation, it's not as you're losing out a lot because mm-hmm. your average price will anyway be low." Second, we're going to majority now, mm. and therefore we can take it as a premium for that. Right. Both are okay. Mm. So f- fourth round, uh, we put in ten million at uh, I think sixty million or something. Uh, the fifth round is when uh, Sequoia came in. Got it. And and, and you. But you know it requires uh, what others will say conviction. Yeah. Uh, in hindsight, maybe it was a little bit of foolishness on our part to do four rounds solo. Mm. A little bit of aggression. Mm-hmm. But we were not schooled in the nuances of fund management, Got and it. we were not running a fund. We were investing off our balance sheet. Yeah. So her quarter, Nokri was making profits her money, mm-hmm. and money was piling up in the bank, and we were deploying it. Right. Okay. And uh, we felt so. The, so you know, our, if you went into money market mutual funds or you went to fixed deposits, you got five six percent per annum. So we were saying five percent is not enough. So it is the alternate use is that. Right. So, so may as well do it here. Got it. Uh, now we are looking very clever and smart because it worked out. We are not worked out. We, we, we would have looked very foolish. Yeah. And uh, you know, risky and foolhardy and stupid. Yeah. No, but I so, think so. So you know, uh, we backed the right person and the right team, chosen the right idea. Uh, we also got lucky. Yeah, absolutely. I'm very kind of you to acknowledge the luck, but uh, it's phenomenal to have that kind of belief and keep on doubling down. Because even if like we see the VCs today, even if there is belief, there is uh, you know scariness of what signals will be like if you can double down or not. Pricing, all of that. No, see, I'll tell you one other thing. The fund, what I know, is the life of the. Correct. After that, the fund has to return money to its LPs, hmm. which means that now typical fund life is ten plus two years, you know, eight plus two years, right? Which means by year, now if if you invest in a fund in the second year operation. By year seven, eight, you're getting nervous and you want to exit. Yeah. The truth is, in India, uh, it takes maybe, maybe you know, twelve to fifteen years for a company to really, from st- inception, to really Get become to big and valuable. Get to profitable, large. So we invested in Policy Bazaar in two thousand eight. Pandra saal baad we are still there. We invested in Zomato in two thousand ten. Pandra saal baad we are still there. If we had been a typical fund, in policy bazaar we were exited by 2015, mm. and somehow did something, okay, yeah. uh, and as a matter by 2018, yeah, 
which have done all right, but you would not have created these outsized returns. Okay, so Absolutely. so so very often, you know, India may you need very patient capital, and that's important. Absolutely. Uh, and this the level of patience required very often is beyond the life of a usual venture capital fund. Quite. Now, if you do a 20 year fund, you will not get LP. Hmm. Because very few people want to wait that long. Correct. So this becomes a dilemma in India. That uh, you know, I think uh, we uh, went public uh, maybe uh, six and a half years after we raised the first round. We were very fast. Yeah. Uh, Mama Earth is fast. Yeah. Six, seven, seven, eight years. Not me alone. But otherwise, people have taken a long time. Absolutely. You know, uh, Zomato took 13 years from inception. Policy Bazaar took 13 years from inception. Uh, Just Dial took I think 15, 20 years. I think uh, India Mart took 20 years, maybe 18 years. Matrimony took 18, 20 years. Uh, you know, uh, make my trip did about 10 years. Yeah. So, समय लगता है. And the truth also is in India, uh, non-IPO strategic sales, where the VCs and investors get the kind of multiple they were looking for when they went in, are very very infrequent. If you leave out Flipkart. No, ba- barely any. Okay, so you're talking about really building a great business and going public. Absolutely. Yeah, no, this is very helpful. Thank you so much for walking us through this uh, very evident point of patient capital. I'd love to also extend this to the public market. So there's this large debate, and you know, uh, there's a two-sided debate. The retail investor does not understand why some of these venture-backed companies uh, are. On losses and are waiting to create profitability. That concept, in and of itself, is not very clear. Uh, what do you think about that in terms of because you are used to building profitable businesses, having large profits to deploy back to the shareholders. What do you think about the current way of building business when it comes to venture back? Look, in the middle, uh, companies making losses became acceptable hmm. around 2019, 2021. When interest rates began to go up and the markets corrected, hmm. right? That is when people say, "Oh, oh, you know, let's go back to basics. We okay. want profitable companies." Zomato is now profitable. The policy bazaar is saying they'll get to profit, right? Uh, Mama Earth is profitable. Yeah. India Mart is profitable. Infoj is profitable. Matrimony is profitable. Uh, Make matrimony is profitable. Indian markets may even now. Uh, hmm. There is reluctance to back uh, loss-making companies for a length of time. Sure. So, can you go public uh, while you're loss-making? You probably can, as long as you know you you're going really fast, sight. in line of sight, hair and buzz, hair or brand, hair or size and scale, hair. Hmm. Uh, but you certainly should be making profit in two, three years. Now, ideally, you should be profitable when you go public. Hmm. Got it. Uh, and, and market market में होता ही है, correct. And, and how do startup founders enforce this from the start, or is it okay to enforce it towards the end of the company life cycle or the start of the public see, journey? See, see, see. Just, if you are a young startup founder, mm-hmm. right? You say you're twenty five, twenty eight. So we backed Vipin the first when he was twenty eight, mm-hmm. right? At twenty eight, you haven't spent two decades in industry in large corporations, understanding mm-hmm. how they work. Correct. कि यू नो सेल्स कॉल कैसे होती है सेल्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कैसे होती है सेल रिलेशनशिप कौन होता है हाउ टू रन अ फाइनेंस फंक्शन राइट हाउ टू रन अ टीम ऑफ 2000 पीपल यू डोंट नो दैट यू डोंट हैव दैट करेक्ट एट 28 इफ यू आर वेरी गुड व्हाट यू हैव इज प्रोडक्ट जीनियस व्हाट यू हैव इज अ पल्स इन द कस्टमर व्हाट यू हैव इज समथिंग दैट्स वर्किंग राइट ओके व्हिच इज व्हाट दिप इन द हेड या क्वेश्चन इज हाउ सून कैन यू सराउंड योरसेल्फ विद अदर्स हु हैव दैट और हाउ सून कैन यू इंबाइब इट और बोथ करेक्ट Along this journey, you are often guided by perhaps your investors, hmm. right? right? Who have seen other companies who are perhaps uh, slightly older, yeah. Uh, and you're trying to get talent from outside into the company. Mm-hmm. Very often, the talent is older than you. So, Correct. as a person, you have to be mature enough to handle talent that's older than you. Hundred uh, percent. Which becomes a challenge in India sometimes. Yeah. Because even the talent has to be willing to be report yeah. to somebody who's ten years younger. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, if you can manage all that and navigate all that, you'll be all right, mm. right? Uh, so, young founders, I think it's important that companies get to profit. If not now, then pretty soon or within the finite time. Certainly, before you go public. Sure. Uh, certainly, if capital is scarce or scarcer than it used to be, mm. uh, you know, and people are not 
uh, valuing you of GMV anymore, or less so. Yeah. Uh, you know, they are valuing you of revenue, margin, uh, path to profit, you know, market leadership, yeah. uh, you know, unit economics, all those things, mm. commercial metrics also. Sure. Uh, you need to focus on that as well. Got it. Perfect. No, I think that makes complete sense. Um, the other thing, you know, uh, the investor side of you is very widely known and there's so much respect in the ecosystem, primarily because you've built this large institution that a lot of people aspire to build. What do you think of investors who are, have been career investors for the longest time? And how do you think that distinction in the ecosystem is getting bridged? So we think uh, investors who are pure financial investors add value. Okay. Because they bring to the table many things that we don't have. Mm. We also believe that we add value because we bring to the table many things that perhaps they don't have as much of. Got it. Uh, so we have found that we have teamed up in companies where there are more than one investor. Mm -hmm. We have teamed up with other investors to actually... Complementary skill sets. Yeah. We look, both have a bit of both. Right. But some are better... And stuff one. that we don't have, Got right? It. So, we are still building that culture. Hmm. Got okay? it. Uh, now, founders tell us that uh, the kind of conversations they have with us are very different from the kind of conversation they have with financial investors. Yeah. But both kinds of conversations are required. Got it. Got right? it. We will discuss more operations. We will discuss the boss sales team has organized care, incentive, incentive plan care. Hmm. Achha, how are you organizing a call center? Yeah. Uh, what's the script like? So, because we do all that inside our own company, for Nokri, for 99 Acres, for Jeevan Sathi, for, you know, uh, Media Bank, Achha, who's the analytics guy? Can we, we can discuss our analytics team. See, there's, okay. there, is, there is a whole bunch of uh, competencies which are very useful, but are very expensive. Hmm. So, AI, ML, analytics. Yeah. Uh, now, in Nokri, we have a team of over 40 people doing that stuff. Yeah. So your guys can come and talk to our guys. Yeah. If you want. Got it. Only if you want. Yeah. So you have those right? capabilities. In so so also we talk that lingo. Yeah. We understand the operational uh, aspects, you know, uh, very well. Now, financial investors bring a whole bunch of other things which you don't have, and which are very useful as well. Got it. Now, it could be a network of other investors. It could be you know, the analyst, you know, run, scrub the numbers dry, the spreadsheets, all that. Yeah. Right? Uh, we don't do perhaps financial modeling as well as they do. Right. Yeah. Right? Got it. So, there's a, there's a host of skill sets and the founder can choose to leverage one over the other in certain situations and choose to yeah. leverage the others. Over. Absolutely. Got it, got it. No, that's that's phenomenal to hear. The other job of an investor is also, you know, on the governance side. And we did see, a, you know, a couple of these quarters where only the negative news was getting highlighted because of whatever reason. As somebody who's, you know, been in very controlled situations and led, you know, profitable companies, a group of companies now, uh, what do you have to say? And you've been on the other side as well. You've been on boards of these companies which have gone IPO. What do you think is the role of corporate governance from the investor end? See, you can't build large, sustainable, uh, well-respected companies and businesses mm -hmm. uh, if you're bad at governance, number one. So first of all, governance has to be in your DA intrinsically. That mm -hmm. I, I'm honest, I want to be honest. I'm mm -hmm. right? right? Now, if you're that kind of person, right, you will want to run your company in a well-governed fashion. Yeah. Okay, so I'll tell you uh, the early conversations that we had. So, April 2000, we raised venture capital for the first time mm -hmm. from ICICI Venture, right? There were a few clauses in the shareholder agreement, mm -hmm. okay, which I had not paid attention to at that time. But the moment the first check came in, first thing, uh, Please change your auditor. Okay. Okay. So uh, I said, why? She says, no, we want a big five auditor. So I parched there. Mm. We want a big five auditor. 
ऐसे नहीं यार बहुत महंगे होंगे थ्री वीक्स लॉस हम ईमानदार हैं कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है नहीं नहीं आप ईमानदार हो दैट्स वाई इन्वेस्टेड बट वी वॉन्ट अग फाइव ऑडिटर दिस इज अ रिक्वायरमेंट और आपने क्लॉज साइन किया दैट यू वुल हायर ऑडिट टू वैटिस्फैक्शन ओके सो वी वेंट शॉपिंग ओके सबसे बात की राइट समी इज चार्जिंग टेन लैक्स समी फाइव लैक्स यू नो वी हैड डन अ रेवेन्यू ऑफ थर्टी सिक्स लैक्स ईयर बिफोर विथ वन पॉइंट एट लैक्स प्रॉफिट बिफोर टैक्स बिकॉज आई वॉज टेकिंग सैलरी अगर मैं सैलरी तो लॉस हो जाता ठीक है तो फाइनली आई मेट कौशिक दत्ता पार्टनर एट प्राइस वाडा हाउस एंड ई से लुक आई लाइक यू टेल मी वॉट यू वॉन्ट आई सेड यार आई वॉन्ट टू एन ऑडिट इन नाइन्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज हाफ माई लास्ट ईयर्स प्रॉफिट ही सर ओके आई लूड इन वन लैख रुपीज ऑन थ्री कंडीशन नंबर वन एज यू ग्रो वी लिंक इज ऑडिट फीस एंड यू नॉट क्वेश्चन मी टिल वी हिट आर रेगुलर ऑडिट फीस ओके ओके नो प्रॉब्लम इस साल तो करो यार यू नो सेकेंड एट वन लैख रुपीज यू विल नॉट मेक टू मच एफर्ट बिटवीन तुम छुपाओगे आई वुड नॉट हैव टू गो डीप इन टू अकाउंट्स टू फाइंड समथिंग ओके अब यू हैव टू गिव मी योर वर्ड यू विल बी टोटली क्लीन ऑनेस्ट कुछ छुपाओगे नहीं परफेक्ट आई शेड वी लाइक दैट एनी वे तो नो प्रॉब्लम विद दैट works out so very good he said then he says you will internalize that your auditors and your independent directors are there to save you from yourself okay they will not uh, they are not policemen from outside hmm which basically means you have to let them in to guide you and you will not hoodwink them or pull them over the eyes you will be totally transparent so they are there to save you from yourself Wow, because promoters in India do all kinds of funny things. Yeah, right. Our job is to save you from yourself. Very interesting. Okay, and I said you are done. You are totally transparent. We we want to do the right thing. Okay, so these are three conversations that we had with the auditor, and we hired the auditor. Conversations with the investor. So, first of all, they said auditor law. Auditor law. Okay. Then they said independent director law. ओके तो वी वेंट आउट कोई आने को तैयार नहीं बिकॉज एट दैट टाइम डॉट कॉम दो बैड वर्ड जो मार्केट एडमेंटेड डाउन सो फाइनली दे सेट ओके गेट समबडी हु नोज यू लाइक्स यू ट्रस्ट यू एंड इज हाईली क्वालिफाइड एंड विल फंक्शन इंडिपेंडेंटली इवन दो ही नोज यू ओके इन योर जजमेंट एंड विल इंटरव्यू इन आर जजमेंट ऑल्सो सो वी गॉट इंडिपेंडेंट डायरेक्टर Okay, uh, who's still on our board, but as non-independent. Got it. Okay, three years ago. Wow. Two years ago. Then they said, "Ki you don't decide your salary. Oh, the board does. We do. Um. Because you can't get rich on our money." Mm-hmm. So your salary will be such that you will survive, but up to that savings will be. Now, what salary will be? Zero. So I said, what salary do you have in mind? He said, one lakh rupees per month. I said, excellent, outstanding. I <laughs> <laughs> was zero earlier. <laughs> so yeah. was a, okay, okay. And then they said, you can't get rich till we get rich, which basically means that you can't sell a single share. Without a, with, okay. without a permission, and that permission is not going to come. Hmm. Wow. So, you will therefore be totally incentivized to make the company large and valuable, so that everybody benefits. Hmm. Then they said there must be zero related party transactions. Hmm. Got it. कोई किसी का भाई नहीं किसी का कजन नहीं भांजा नहीं वी हैव टू वी हैव टू टेक अ परमिशन इट्स पॉसिबल बट टेक अ परमिशन राइट या सो रेड पार्टी ट्रांजैक्शंस वी वेरी केयरफुल एंड टेक अ परमिशन एवरीवेयर प्रायर गॉट इट देन दे सेड वन मोर थिंग व्हिच इज प्रायर डिस्क्लोजर इज 80% ऑफ गुड गवर्नेंस कि आपने पहले बता दिया है कि मैं ये कर रहा हूं अदर आर ओके विद इट then you go ahead correct so there are some fundamental principles of good governance but you know it begins and ends in the founder's head 
करें इफ इट डजन द बेसिक डी एन ए कि मैं ईमानदार हूँ और ईमानदार रहूँगा it works out and they yeah, yeah. keep it intact do you think these principles somewhere got lost in the ecosystem or, and do you think these are relevant in today's times they are totally relevant okay did they get lost answer is yes uh, uh when there's too much money people do all sorts of funny things hmm got it got it fair no i think that's those those are very very crucial principles i i wanted to ask you what are the fundamentals of a company that will eventually go public and that in reverse is perhaps the answer no i think um, yeah yeah that's part of it good governance part of it the business has been sound and solid and predictable and robust and growing and either profitable or with clear visibility of profit sure uh it also has a certain size and scale you know mm-hmm. below a certain size and scale it's not a good idea to go public see i'll tell you something taking a company that's worthy of taking public is a great thing mm-hmm. but if you're not ready to go public and you go public it can be a terrible thing for your company because right uh, there's nothing worse for your reputation and your employee morale and confidence than a failed ipo or an ipo that is underwater for a longish time yeah. uh you you know uh you can f- somehow push through an ipo mm-hmm. very often bankers will do it for you yeah and some investors will come in but an ipo has to be serviced invest see Investor relations is not a finance job; yeah. it is a sales and service job. Okay. You got to keep on talking to investors, prospective investors. Keep on, you know, discussing, uh, and keep on servicing them. Correct. And if you don't have continuing good news, then becomes a problem. Becomes a problem. Yeah. So that's that's interesting. A lot of other uh, patterns in your career, which is you know, be super long term, build things predictably, uh, be honest. These are all intuitive insights. Yet they got get lost somewhere in the middle, right? Uh, they're also not very interesting. So uh, there's no thrill uh, in the day to day life and of an entrepreneur. People who love building zero to one, उन्हें हसल चाहिए, thrill चाहिए. They want to you know. ब्रेक लाइक नॉट ब्रेक थिंग्स दे वॉन्ट फिक्स थिंग्स विच आर ब्रोक इन एक्सेट्रा बट पब्लिक कंपनी रन करने में बहुत सारी चीज़ें नहीं है डू यू सी दिस एज अ प्रॉब्लम ऑफ सॉर्ट्स और हाउ डू पीपल मेक पीस विद द बोरिंग वे ऑफ बिल्डिंग लार्ज फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन देखो द ट्रूथ इज आई नेवर थॉट लॉन्ग टर्म आई ऑलवेज थॉट टूडे इमीडिएट बट द मेथड ऑफ वर्किंग remained what it was which is that you'll be good with people you'll follow the law you'll be good with the minority shareholders uh, you will avoid conflict of interest you will pay your full taxes right uh, and you will run a high quality business yeah. that is that is a daily method of working ab chahe 10 saal lage chahe 5 saal lage chahe 1 saal lage i mean you know we didn't think about that got it ultimately 10 saal lag gaye fair fair no this is very interesting so if i had to also ask you uh, there's this new type of entrepreneur we were discussing this before the conversation started right all of the the zomato founders were iid delhi uh, policy bazaar yashish has been from you know iid delhi i am uh, there was this archetype of founders jo 2005 se 15 mein worked out well but aaj wale founders different hai there's a new breed of founders coming up what do you think about this change well actually if you go back further in history hmm. right india has always been a Entrepreneurial country. Sure. Even in the days of license permit right, there was entrepreneurship, right? But the truth is that India has a very large middle class, mm. uh, where we were always conditioned. Middle class parents were always conditioned the kids to study really hard, mm. clear the entrance exams, get good marks, eventually take up a good job. Okay. A good job could be in government, could be in private sector, could be mm. academics, whatever. but yeah. good safe steady job with a monthly salary predictably okay uh, so so the indian middle class had this great quest for financial security right and therefore uh, most indian middle class young men and women would not become entrepreneurs hmm right things began to change a little bit first with the it services companies subsequently the first wave of dot coms hmm. right uh today so you know in my class when i remember about i graduated in 89 if you done a poll and said how many of you would 
want to be entrepreneur at some point in time in your life, maybe 10, 15 percent of the hands would have gone up. Today, it'll be about 50, 60 percent. Mm-hmm. And the batch size is yeah, 3x or 2.5x, right? Uh, so, entrepreneurship has become a mainstream career choice, an aspiration career choice uh, for people of that socioeconomic background who would otherwise have Choose gone into salary jobs mm. in large corporations. Right. Uh, so, I think this has changed. And this is okay. significant. So, you know, I'll, I'll tell you why it's significant. So, when I go to the IITs and IIMs and give a talk, I very often ask a question. How many of you are from families which you would describe as middle class? Roughly about 80% of the hands go up. Okay. When I say middle class, I mean salary jobs. Khana hai, ghar hai. Uh, salary jobs. Right. You, you know, not in business. Okay. 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 Means government, me. public sector, okay. uh, railways, mm-hmm. police, defense, academics. Uh, you know, uh, banking, maybe private sector, but still salary jobs. Got it. Okay. Uh, and w- what this tells you is that it's the Indian middle class where parents tell their children that you have nothing to inherit. The only way you can make it is studies. Go out there and clear the competitive exams. Yeah. Go out, get, get the board marks and you get the admissions. Mm. And so the Indian middle class children slog their butts off. Yeah. And some of them make it, right? And these people were earlier joining the best large corporations as employees. Okay. They're the brightest talent. They've cleared all the exams. They've studied hard. Uh, but they were risk averse. Today, uh, many of them have got different aspirations. And I think, so this thing of uh, highly educated middle class entrepreneurs by choice, Hmm. Earlier, it was inheritance, business family, business community, business caste. Correct. No, no, no. Right. Okay? So, but this is the new kind of entrepreneur. Hmm. And this is the kind of entrepreneur which very often gets VC funding. Hmm. True. Wow, I think that's that's very deep. And so, so ye, ye, ye hua hai. Uh, and I think that is good. Absolutely. Uh, your understanding of the Indian consumer set and like founders in general is very deep. Apne founder side pe baat hume bataya, what is on the consumer set that you have seen evolution for? Like as the digital economy has grown, how has the Indian consumer also evolved? So when we began Nokri, there were 14,000 internet accounts in the country like I told you. Yeah. Right Today there are close to a billion people on the net using the internet. So obviously the market is much larger. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a lot of them are actually transacting they're consuming content. Uh, all of this is a new economy. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, the consumer is a 20-year-old, he was very different from a 30-year-old. Mm-hmm. See, a 20-year-old has was born after the internet came, right. after mobile telephony came. Mm-hmm. A 30-year-old still has, as a childhood, was not digitally native, right? right. Uh, and in the conduct behavior, would needs to buy, how quick they work. And you can see that in uh, the, the evolution of social media platforms. Yeah. Right? Uh, first, email. Then, SMS. Yeah. All email SMS at the same time. Correct. Then, WhatsApp. Then, Instagram. Then, share. Then, all these kind of things. So, and as the younger audience is, so 20 year old is often not on the same social media platform as a 30 year old. Yeah. As a 60 year old, I club them together. But right. actually, they don't club themselves together. True. And a 14-year-old is not on the same platform as a 20-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's taking a major shift. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to keep close and keep understanding stuff. And I can't understand very often. So what I do is I just hire younger people yeah. in the company, and younger and people they understand and, it. Well. And younger people teach us. Hundred percent. And that's lovely to hear. Uh, Coming to another side of, you know, your professional trajectory, uh, you started Ashoka University, you yourself... So I'm one of... One of the founders. One, one of... Asho- of uh, well, Ashoka now has close to 200 founders. Okay. Uh, I'm one of them. Sure, sure. Part of a larger cohort, of course, but starting an institutional uh, education institution, and then you've also been, 
you know you've gone to really great schools yourself in stephens i am ahmedabad talk to us about the importance of perhaps great education in uh, the general person's life today so look we have always an intent need gap and then build something for it right and i was observing uh, you know before and after we went public uh that look india has the best students yeah right and indian institutions produce the best graduates yeah but is that darwin at work or is there institutional excellence hmm that was a question that always bothered me now as i used to go and speak in indian colleges i found the students exceptionally bright i went overseas and spoke and met young people i found that very often students in indian institutions are brighter than them but the institutional excellence there is of a different order hmm. you know when you look at cambridge or you look at a princeton sure right and i said to myself why can't we have an institution in india which to some extent replicate some of that hmm. and while the iits are excellent right there's institutional excellence in iits nine of course so on the engineering side management side we felt the problem had been somewhat solved sure but we felt on general ba liberal arts programs we felt there was a gap sure and so i went to ashish dhawan uh, and i said listen i think it's time to start a new college a new type of university in india a new college in india mm. liberal arts and sciences uh built on the american model not the uk model see hamare jo hai na is uk model pick a subject mm. and they study it right uh, in the us you do wits you do courses across five six uh, areas right. in the first two years then you decide your major right in hindustan mein kya hota hai ki what you graduate in depends on the marks you got in class 12 or in that entrance exam right right i want to come to science but mere ko civil mein liya mere rank utni achhi nahi thi Right. But I'm passionate about computer science, mm-hmm. so we were, we wanted to change a few things. Mm-hmm. We said, "Pehle to ab liberal arts sciences mein pehle focus karenge. Uske baad ham got it. Dusre mein jayenge, right? Uh, second, we will not we will allow students to we'll do wits first, and then allow students to choose their major. Yeah. It will not depend on the class twelve marks. The class twelve marks are useful in terms of who to admit. Mm-hmm. Once you admit somebody, he can he or she can choose the major after a year. Got it. Okay. Right. Then we said that we will uh, do collective philanthropy, hmm. which basically means it's not one person putting in all the money, so it doesn't become a family business or one company university. Correct. So because there are two hundred founders clo- or close to, right? No one person controls it. Decides what happens. Hmm. What does it mean for governance? It means that the academics have independence. absolutely because there is a there are checks and balances sure right? yeah uh we said we would start with liberal arts and and humanities which is social science humanities and then add on science then add on entrepreneurship which is a trajectory we followed yeah okay yeah. Uh, we started with 25 acres we now have got close to 100 acres of land we are building the second phase of the campus uh we said that we will make it financially inclusive mm. uh so almost 60% of the students at ashoka are on some kind of scholarship from 25% to maybe 100% depending on your family income sure right uh we said over a period of time will be financially sustainable mm. right uh yet at the same time inclusive yeah so there are 5 7 8 and we also said that listen you know in india अगर एक चीज कामयाब हो गई पीपल कॉपी इट राइट सो द गवर्नमेंट स्टार्ट फाइव आई आई टीज फर्स्ट वो कामयाब हो गए उनके ग्रेजुएट्स दे आर फोर थाउजेंड इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज नाउ ऑल ओवर इंडिया ट्रू राइट द गवर्नमेंट स्टार्ट थ्री आई एम्स मल्टीपल नाउ देर आर थ्री थाउजेंड मैनुअल स्कूल डिमांड है आबादी है पॉपुलेशन है ओके सो वी सेट वी प्रोड्यूस वन अशोका बिल्ड इट आउट इफ यू कैन मेक इट सक्सीड maybe 100 more will come up mm-hmm. and a country of 1.4 billion needs that money so we said we'll open ourselves to others who want to start similar institutions and that's what we're doing so today there are other colleges and universities that have 
started liberal arts programs along the lines of Ashoka. Ashoka. There are the universities coming up along the lines of Ashoka. Mm. And we think that's a good thing. 100%. No, that's a great service to the nation and very commendable what you've been able to do beyond the ambit of capitalism on this front as well. Um, uh, on the subject of you know young folks and great education, uh, you know that we were talking about this, and I brought up the seventy hour sort of comment that Mr. Narayan Murthy made recently on the public. As you look at uh, somebody who interacts with many many youngsters in the country, be it founders, be it operators at startups, be it folks taking up education in the institution, what is your observation on today's youngster and how they work? See, I'll tell you, seventy uh, hours a week is not religion. I think the concept was be prepared to work as hard as required, mm -hmm. and that may be much harder than you're working right now, mm -hmm. right? If you look at any entrepreneur in India who succeeded, ask him to kitni mehnat ki, he will say, "Maine bahut mehnat ki." Because to make something work in India, you got to put in the hours. Hundred percent. Right. So you know the truth is, if you're doing a startup, there is no work-life balance. There's only work-life integration. You live for your work for the first few years, definitely. Yeah. You can't push off at 5 p.m. and say, "Oh yeah." You cannot, you know, say Saturday Sunday I can't work. Okay, you have to do something if you want to succeed. Let me show you a first-generation entrepreneur. Who, in the first five, ten years, did not have this work ethic and has succeeded. It doesn't happen. Right. So nobody saying work seventy hours definitely by by the clock. Yeah. But you may have to. If I go back to my career, my first three years in advertising, right? It's a technically five day week, nine fifteen to five forty five. But I used to be office at eight thirty. Why? Because oh, manual typewriters in those days, we had two three typists in the office secretaries. Everybody used to share them. Now you want to write your letters to clients, your memos and your letters, which are typed, right? Typing was a scarce resource, mm. so the guy could only turn out eight, ten, twelve documents, twenty documents a day. Right. He would, he or she would see, you know, see for first in, first out. Yeah. <laughs> so you were getting early in the morning to make sure your letter was on top. Mm. So you came at eight thirty. Hand wrote your letter and make sure before the guy comes in, you're on top. Wow. Now others who didn't come in didn't get the letters out in time. Hmm. I made I went the extra mile. Right. Okay. Uh, I ended up working. I didn't take a single day's leave. I didn't. Uh, I worked all Saturdays, maybe six to seven Sundays for three years. Not. I didn't feel it was a burden. I was enthusiastic about my work. Hmm. The work. You know, demanded it. Sure. I was transferred to Bombay, right? And I was living with a paying guest, and my salary just wasn't enough. But if you ended up working late beyond eight thirty, you got dinner and transport back home. If you came on Saturday, Sunday, you got dinner, and you got transport back to and from, and you got you got you got lunch, mm. right? So I would volunteer for all this. Mm. I simply needed to. Yeah. And I didn't complain. So. I don't think seventy hours is relevant, but I think the message is that if you really want to succeed as an entrepreneur, you have to work hard. Go the extra and, mile. And work hard, anybody. As simple as that. And uh, hopefully, you won't mind doing it because you want to build that startup. Absolutely. So this is not lecture wazi. This is, you know, reality. Yeah. No, it shows. I think uh, when you, it, it this is the complete personification of meaning what you say, saying what you've done, and it just shows in the way you've been able to say it as well. And I think uh, a lot of folks can testify to it. Uh, uh, the other thing about building startups, and maybe we bring that to a close, post which we can get to just quick concluding questions, um, is the fact that you identify these white spaces in the Indian sort of digital economy, be it you know. Uh, aggregating menus, be it aggregating policies, be it aggregating job boards. So those two, those two were identified by the Pinder and team and the Ashish and team. Not sure. Me. I mean, uh, we we recognize that there may be something here. So sure. please back them. Absolutely. And we got lucky that they allowed us to back them. Yeah. So you know, I think the success, the credit for success of 
a company goes to the management without not to the investor hundred percent yes yes uh, at no point do I want to misconstrue this these are of course the companies uh, built by the founders and investors have a, a minor role in it but uh, the larger point I wanted to understand because you have so much experience is that you were able to pick cues from these trends which were happening uh, a lot you know how many between two thousand and seven and two thousand twelve had dust company aki yogi right many have sunk without a trace. But because the Martin policy was succeeded, we talk about people yeah. have forgotten about the others. So once you have one or two successes, na, so khun maak ho jate hain. Okay, so we we are we are good, but we are not infallible. Of course, of we course. often get it wrong. Still, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I would hesitate to say that uh, you know we are super smart and we are geniuses. <laughs> no, we muddle sure. through. Got it. Yeah, no, I I completely agree. Okay, so 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 we all muddle through, yar. The humility, you know, is great, and I understand the principle. <laughs> I mean, if there's somebody who looks like a genius from far, it's Steve probably. Jobs. Okay. Okay. Ki uh, sab, he will produce a product which the customer doesn't know he or she wants, but he will produce it, and after he produces it, I was just looking for this. Correct. Correct. Uh, rest of us follow customer trends. <laughs> he creates customer. He creates the customer trends. Yeah. That's true, but yeah, I mean, there's a small digression. But there's also a famous story where he was absolutely against the iPhone, and his team had to succeed. So even the best, but had to get it wrong. So I made so many mistakes. Others have told me, "Boss, you got to go there." And I said yes, and ultimately credit me. I got it, but I don't deserve it. Correct, correct. Um, but so, so, so let me give you some examples. Please. Nokri uh, initially was a job listing board, only a job listing board. Right. Today's sixty-five to seventy percent of our revenue comes from the resume database. Mm-hmm. We did not. We were not even gathering resumes. It was Hitesh who and Vivek Hare who insisted we have to gather the resumes. And I resisted uh-huh. for six months. <laughs> Finally, I agreed, and that has become our biggest product. Okay. Uh, Zomato was just a restaurant listing site. 2018, from so, pehle 10 saal just restaurant listings, and that's what we backed. 2018, Dipinder came to me. Along with uh, uh, Gigi, and said, "Hum food delivery ja rahe hain, food delivery." I said, "Don't be daft. It'll burn money. Don't do it. <laughs> Mistake of your life." He insisted. I said, "Fine, do it." Mm. And that's what has built this company. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, on numerous occasions. That have been. And, so, for example, uh, in Policy Bazaar, we went and sold some shares. In the middle, hmm. Kitty Agarwal came to me and said, "Why are you doing this?" And six months later, we invested again hmm. on her insistence, and that wow. really worked out. So, most things are the achievements of more than one person. Sure, hundred percent. Right? But you know, public recognition may make or break you. You know, you know how we invest in Zomato. Hmm. So, we were investing in startups. We done policy bazaar, done a few others, uh, merit nation. Uh, and Hitesh one day was speaking to me, and he said, "Have you seen this site, Foodie Bay? That time, Zomato was called Foodie Bay." I said, "Yes, I use it all the time. It's a great site." He said, "So do I. Why haven't we thought of investing in it?" In it? A penny dropped. It was his idea, not my idea. Hmm. Wow. So, so, but you know, I get the credit for it. Sure. That's the nature of you know life. But right. uh, but the truth is, whatever has happened in Foodie. Uh, is the result of a few hundred, maybe a few thousand people's efforts. Hundred, some more than others. Yeah, I'm so glad you've mentioned this because I mean we can't just single out the credit. Um, largely, what I do, uh, like I was just trying to probe, is do you think there are distinct opportunities in your mind that will get built out in the next five, ten years when you look at India as an economy? Uh, there definitely are, and there must be. I don't sure. know them. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we never invest top down. कि बॉस ये ट्रेंड है ये मैक्रो है अब इस सेक्टर को देखो ओके राइट इफ वी डन दैट वी वुड नेवर हैव इन्वेस्ट इन जोमेटो पॉलिसी बता राइट बिकॉज वी ऑफन इन्वेस्ट इन कैटेगरी क्रिएटिंग कंपनीज द कैटेगरी डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट द सेक्टर डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट राइट व्हाट वी लाइक टू डू इज जस्ट मीट अ थाउजेंड अंडर क्वार्टर हम हजार लोगों को हम हजार कंपनियां देखते हैं आई द सेकेंडरी रिसर्च और टॉकिंग टू द फाउंडर मीटिंग द कंपनी राइट फिर हम एवरी क्वार्टर तीन चार में इन्वेस्ट करते हैं ठीक है और वी डू इट बॉटम अप वी सी वॉट बबलिंग थ्रू वी सी हु इज अ गुड टीम एंड अदर डूंग समथिंग इंटरेस्टिंग 
तो डेफिनेटली देर बी होल वन शो कंपनी सक्सीडिंग बट नो वी डोंट डू इट टॉप डाउन सो आई कॉन्ट आइडेंटिफाई सेक्टर्स आई जस्ट वी जस्ट लुक एट स्टार्ट अप्स got it that's fascinating i think this has been very very interesting uh, as we close down the episode i had just a couple of more general personal questions for you one of them was about this um, financial success right uh, on paper you're a billionaire there's a lot that can be said about the money aspect of things how do you define money in your life and what's the role it plays i think uh you're financially successful when you can do stuff without thinking about money Okay. You're also financially successful when you live within your means. Mm. Right? Yeah. Uh, and the best definition of financial success is what was told to me by a friend. Uh, you're financially successful when you're doing better than your sister-in-law's husband. <laughs> Got it. Okay. But but I don't know. Truthfully speaking, uh, I think if you keep your needs simple, okay, you don't have to drive the fanciest cars in the world. you don't need to buy property everywhere right just restrict it and then try and do good with the money you have but let me tell you all these lists of you know top 100 top is all rubbish this is lazy journalism okay these are basically journalists who are going to distribute company and say who knows how much there's so many people who have wealth in, in non listed like companies mm. that's not counted yeah. second if the share market goes up right they will celebrate you know they will say bhai ranking change ho gayi <laughs> but if you actually run send your shares yeah so it's like saying you know my father bought a plot in wasan vihar for 4 lakh rupees or or for 40000 rupees in 1962 that plot is now worth 60 crores or 100 crores hmm. right but it's a house i live in man i'm not going to sell it hmm yeah got it yeah but i i you know you don't build companies to trade 100% But but you build companies to because they build an institution. The role of money and how founders should look at it, in your opinion. Yeah, there's no should. Okay. To each his own. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think it's good to be detached from money. Okay. Because you sleep peacefully at night. It's good to pay your taxes. Sure. You sleep peacefully at night. Makes sense. I I love the humility. um and it just makes sense i think this is just good sense that we've heard all over generations but uh, sometimes it gets over glamorized when it comes to money but thanks for reinforcing this belief one question that i was personally very fascinated to learn from you is uh who are people that you have interesting conversations with because outside in it looks like uh everybody would learn to talk to you everybody would want to gain your insights everybody would want to learn from your experiences but what are your sources of learning your sources of people that you find a lot of intellectual curiosity so, from so look uh, i love to meet people who are younger than me as i get older hmm. more more people younger than me right but uh, i think fresh ideas come from young people sure right so when i meet startup founders well, yeah i have interesting conversations got it right when i meet the younger people people you know in, the, in our investing team yeah and they challenge me i have interesting conversations lovely okay uh, sometimes when i talk to an academic mm-hmm. i have an interesting conversation got it got it there's a very damn bit but yeah. people that have something to offer that is not immediately in your radar i think fresh ideas and excite me got it A- and over the course of years were there any mentors or sorts or people who played a crucial role in your yeah, journey yeah this term mentor na you kafi overused hai but the it was not in use 20 years ago yaar wo to ab zyada use ho gaya hai han ji so i don't have a mentor okay. but i have uh, learned from 50 different people usually my colleagues got it uh, so when i was 21 in my first job all the people around me hmm. in that company lintas my boss i had i had seven eight bosses in the first two years yeah uh, all of them were smart uh, my boss's boss my boss's boss's boss all of them yeah. right Uh, and I learned stuff like prioritization, clarity of thinking, uh, con- customer connect, uh, personal organization, uh, working under stress and pressure. Uh, you know, just managing people. Mm. So you know, I was in a job as a 21 year old. I had joined uh, as a executive trainee. That's my title. I was in client servicing. Got it. Now, as a trainee in client servicing in an ad agency, I was at the bottom of the food chain. absolute bottom 
because I was responsible and accountable for outputs and outcomes without without having any authority. And so I was getting work done out of people hmm. who were older than me, wow. but not reporting to me. <laughs> yeah. And if they didn't do my work, nothing had happened to them. Right. Because they were they were they were competing demands in that time. So you had to coax, cajole, charm, beg, and somehow make it happen. I think so. Maybe seventy, eighty percent of my people skills came from there. Mm. Right. And you learned how to be humble. You know, I went from St. Stephen's College with a chip on my shoulder. I'm smart. Yeah. Right. But you know, within six months, uh, you know, I was uh, showed my place. And yeah. then I learned to work. Got it. So it was a tough apprenticeship, but uh, also a lot of fun, and I made some good friends eventually. Yeah, hundred mm, percent. This has been very fascinating, sir. Thank you so much for all that you shared. I have last two questions before we conclude. One of them is, uh, you know, I am I'm also personally again very curious about this, but it just looks like even today you bring your hundred percent to everything that you end up doing. So if I had to ask you, how do you spend your time, both professionally and personally, now that you're at a point where most people would call this a success in the traditional sense of it, how do you now go about your days and what keeps you going today? Oh, my day starts uh, in the morning. Um, I do some yoga. I have an instructor coming. Uh, and then, uh, you know, work starts. And it doesn't end till about 9 or 10 in the at night. I mean, on a sporadic, sporadic basis. Sure. Right? Um, and uh, and typically, what happens is that uh, very often I'm not in control of my time. Mm -hmm. The stuff happens to you. Sure. Uh, I get constantly get, you know, called for meetings uh, or for events or conferences or whatever. And uh, I have to prioritize. So mm. I'm busy most of the time at work. So it's not as work is reduced. Sure. Just the nature of work has changed. Got it, got it. And uh, what's the driving force still? Uh, I think young people. I think the excitement of startups. I think entrepreneurship. When I meet sure. entrepreneurs. So for example, uh, you know, I just met a company which is trying to do something very interesting in uh, women's safety. Hmm. Anyway, yeah. Now, it's a it's a very prelim concept, but if it achieves what it wants to achieve, it'll uh, help a lot of women, working yeah. women, right? Uh, and let's see how. It, uh, no, so I got into the. It's like, I love ideas, and I love people. Got it. This is very very motivating and inspiring to hear. I have one question before the end, which is um, on ambition. Sometimes when you've achieved and seen success, your level of ambition is just way higher. And ambition differs for people to people. When you are starting out, it's very relative in nature. What does ambition mean for you and how do you perhaps help others look at something from a higher ambition lens? So obviously, I'm full-time in the company, so I want the company to do better and better. Sure. That's part of the ambition. But I have to do it through helping and enabling other people to do their jobs better so the company does better. Hmm. I also like to help people outside the company. Sure. Okay, whether it's young entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. startups, whether it is uh, whoever, right? I also work on a few government committees sure. to try and uh, advise, help, wherever I'm called. Mm. Got it. Yeah. So it varies from yeah. a multiple course, but no, this is very helpful. To the end, I, I was trying to fit understand a fitting end, but I'll probably just end with a simplistic question, uh, and it's twofold. Uh, it looks like you're a very value-oriented person and these values have led to your success. You mentioned it in passing through the conversation. But if you could perhaps summarize some of your core values as a person. And the yeah, last... Yeah, I don't want to over-framework this thing. Okay. But I'll say Please. Uh, your parents were right. Okay. And that is... Mm. That is the best one line I've heard on the podcast, I think. Uh, brilliant. Uh, but no, I had the second part of the question was... Um, if you have any strong opinions on things that you think are definitely how things should go, I think that also will be very helpful to hear at the end. I'd like to see more entrepreneurs becoming more frugal. Okay. Frugality. I think I think the some of the greatest companies are capital efficient. Yeah. So India is a capital scarce country. We have to use the capital wisely. Sure. 
got it so frugality as a principle and your parents were right mm. those are both amazing pointers to end at thank you so much sir i'm very grateful to have had the opportunity to host you and thanks for being so gracious with mm. your time thank you thank you thank you so much thank you.